Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Learning FreeCAD for Beginners, where we teach the fundamentals of FreeCAD whilst we learn workflows. In today's tutorial, we're gonna be learning a surface and base feature workflow. Now the base feature is in the part design. We've touched on surfacing before, but we're gonna pull this together in a more practical workflow. We're gonna start off in the SketchUp. From there, we're gonna create a skeleton. Now, in this case, I've chosen a very simple skeleton to create a rudimentary ship. From there, we're gonna be using both the surface and the part workbench. And with those two workbenches, we're gonna be creating surfaces against that skeleton to finally booling them all together into a solid object. So we're gonna be working with that workflow and we're gonna be making a number of solids against different parts of that skeleton. Now we could do it all in one go, but we're gonna keep this simple, taking this step by step. From there, we're going to be using a part design workflow. So we're going to import that object into part design workbench via something known as a base feature. This allows us to bridge that workflow, taking the solid from the part and surface workbench and using it in the part design with sketches against those faces of that object, along with pads and pockets to create the end result. So I hope you're enjoying these videos and let's have a look at this workflow. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. So in FreeCAD, the first thing we're gonna do is create a new document. And I'm gonna come over to the Sketcher. Now we're gonna be using a surface workbench, Sketcher, and a part workbench workflow. I'm not using the part design because we're building this as a multi-body object. And we've got other workbenches involved as well. We've got the surface workbench here. I can use the part design afterwards to pull this in as a base feature and build upon that but this is just going to get the basics of the ship down first, the shape. Go into the sketcher, and what we're gonna do is sketch the top shape of the ship. Create a new sketch along the XY plane. We're not worried too much about the dimensions. We're just looking at shape for the time being, just to get that technique and allow you to understand the actual workflow. I'm gonna create two arcs. Now I'm using the endpoint and rim point arc, this one here. We'll drop this down, we can find it, endpoint and rim point. And the two arcs are going to be the ends of the ship. So I'm gonna connect one arc to horizontal line, like so. And the other arc is gonna be curved through it. This means you can see what happens when we do the surfacing against different surfaces, because it'll be a different set of actions to surface this one compared with this one. So I want these symmetrical across here. So I'm gonna take the two arc centers. So this is the arc center for this one, and this is the arc center for this one. And we can place those symmetrical to that line. So click one, click the other, and then click the horizontal line and use the symmetry constraint. Got those there. And let's make sure that this point is on that line. So take the middle, take the center line and use a point on line constraint. Now I'm gonna keep it simple and just place an arc between here, from here to here. I'm just gonna place an arc and the same on the other side from that point to that point. I'm not gonna worry about tangency across there. We're just keeping things simple. You can make more arcs if you want something a bit more complicated. I'm going to take these two points and place them in line with a vertical constraint and the same with these two points as well. Vertical constraint. And now we can just adjust the shape to what we see fit. So I'm going to want something like that and then hit close. So we've got the top of the ship I'm gonna create arcs coming from these two points downwards. Now, the thing is, I need to get to these two points first. Now, there's an easy way of doing this. 
and I'm going to use a little trick with this top sketch. I'm going to place a line from here to here, making sure it attaches to this line here. We've got some problems with redundancy constraints. So I click that, hit delete, because we had a horizontal constraint automatically added. And what we'll do is take these two points and keep them in vertical alignment. What this allows me to do is that I want to attach a sketch to the right side. Let's bring this around here to create these arcs. And I want to start them at these points, these two points. By placing this line in here, I can click on that line, still in the sketcher, and create a sketch. And it's gonna say normal to edge, so the sketch is gonna be facing normal, so along this edge. So we'll be sketching along the right direction, as you can see, but it's placed us on this point here. So what we do, we close the sketch. Though it's normal to edge, we'll adjust that. Still keeping it normal to edge, but we'll add enough reference. to so reference to, and we want to select this vertex, this one here. It's gonna to change to plane by three points. Click on normal to edge again and hit OK and click off. Now when we come into this sketch, what you'll see is a sketch has moved to that point, which is in line with these two points. It's exactly what we want. So it's almost like a piece of construction geometry that's visible. It saves us creating the sketch and then moving it to that point. And I want it in line with these points here because I'm going to pull that geometry in. So I'm going to use external geometry tool and pull that point in. So I'm going to click on it, that point's come in. Do the same on the other side. So we've got those two points. Word of warning, if you see this, if you get end up with two points here and two points here, that means you've clicked on this line. So it's pulled in that point, and also it's pulled in the point over here. It doesn't really matter as long as we use this point here. What we can do is just hit escape, click on that line and delete, and that's gone. So now I'm looking at the shape of the front of the ship. So I can come into the right and I'm going to use the endpoint and rim point arc and connect up with the auto constraints on. So coincident to that point and come down and attach it to that vertical line and add some arc into there like so. I'm going to do the same for the other side using this one and this point now. Not a point on line, I want a coincident. Don't get a coincident, well we can just select those two and use the coincident constraint up here. So we've got that there. I'm gonna make sure that these two points are symmetrical to this line. Redundant constraint there, let's delete that. We didn't really need that by like using the symmetrical constraints. And what we can do is adjust that where that's going to be. So I'm going to go for something around about here. Might be a bit too fast, let's bring this up. Something like that. Let's hit close and we can see that's in there. Now let's create another sketch. This time I'm gonna come around and I'm going to sketch a curve that connects these two up. So what we're doing is building up a sketch skeleton of the ship. So from the front, let's create a sketch. We'll look along the XZ plane. So the XZ plane. Okay. I'm going to bring in some geometry using the external geometry tool. And bring in this point. Now you see I've got the line, if I click it, we get that point there, that's fine. I'm not going to use it, and that point there. And we use the endpoint room mark. And connect up those two. And make the arc that we want. Those two points are connected, so I'm going to take both of those and use the coincident constraint. 
So that's in there. We're still sketching along this way. So I'm going to create the line. Now, do I want to arc or do I just want a line? Let's just place a line in here. So from here to somewhere over here. I'm going to pull in this point to keep in line with that one. Just pull in this point here. And we're going to take these two points and keep them in line with a vertical constraint. Those are in line now. Let's close that. So you can see how this is developing. It's not the true shape of a ship, but it gives you an idea of the workflow that we'll be using. Now I'm going to create some curvature between these two points. One thing is, if we look at the top sketch, we've got no center point to use. So before I created this line with this center point, this one here, we've got nothing to attach it to on this side. And I need some kind of line in here. So what I could do is add a point, or when I go into the sketch, double click on that sketch, I can come in and use a line and attach it to this arc point of line constraint and come out to about here. Now we're going to need this point on this line with point of line constraint. And also we're going to take this point and this point and keep them in vertical alignment. So we've got those there. That will move the end of the ship, as you can see. So we can adjust that. If I hit close now, I can create my sketch against here like we did before. So let's zoom in, click on that line and create the sketch. Normal to edge, so this will be in the center of the sketch going forwards, hit OK. So now we're in our sketch. You can see where we are, we're right on that point. We need to be on this point, but I'm going to start sketching in here anyway, and then move the sketch. That way we can see what happens when we change the attachment mode. I'm going to use the import geometry and bring in this point, this point, and also this point. That's projected forward. So this is where the sketch is going to be. It's going to be sitting on these points in a moment. Let's add the geometry in here. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to hit escape and using the end point and rim point arc once again. And coming in and add in the arcs. And this one. Now I've got those arcs in there. Let's make sure that these two have equality. And let's hit close. So we can see how those sit. Now, if we change the map mode, come in here, we're normal to edge at the moment. So this sketch here, sketch edge seven. Let's click on reference and select this vertex. So come in and select this vertex here. It's going to go into error because our attachment mode has changed, it's changed away from normal to edge. So click on normal to edge, hit OK, click off, and what you see is that has now moved and connected up to these points. There's one last arc we need to add, and we need to add this arc on this side. Let's come around, look at the rear, XZ plane. So we need a new sketch on that, make sure nothing's selected. New sketch, XZ, okay. It's flipped us around the other way, but that's fine. I zoom in and bring in some geometry. So now we can bring in this point here, which is that line. So that line we added, it's brought in the whole line, but that's absolutely fine. That was to help us to get that sketch in there. It's also helped us to bring in that center point. And we'll bring in this point here. Now I'll probably end up bringing in the line because I can't get it, but that's fine. As long as we got that point and we add the end point and rim point arc between these two. Like so. 
Obviously you can be much more cleaner with your geometry and your constraints. We've started to get that shape in there. It's not exact ship shape, but it's close enough for what we're doing. Let's hit close and see what we've got. So we've got this shape here. Now we're going to do some surfacing. I'm just going to save this. So now we've got a skeleton of the rudimentary ship. Let's try to surface this now. We're going to be using the surface workbench. Let's come around to the surface workbench and start adding surfaces. We're going to be using the filling tool, this one here. So we click on that or we'll come on to surface filling. We can start adding edges. Let's start with this one. So I'm going to create a number of solids. So we can take it slowly so we get an understanding of how the surface workbench works. And what I'm thinking about doing is creating a number of solids from here so you get an idea of how to use them for different applications as well. Let's click add an edge. Now I'm going to take this edge and I'm looking for the next connecting edge. So if I follow this down, the next connecting edge is this one. Or if I follow this up, it's this one. So add edge gain. Click this one. Click this one. So we've got that surface in there. Let's hit OK. So that's our first surface done. Now I could use symmetry against this surface to bring it over to the other side because it's going to be exactly the same and it would be more logical to do that but I'm going to follow the same process on the other side if we do get into trouble then we use symmetry so just a basic mirror there I'm going to click on that surface and press the space bar so don't get confused what edges to add again I'm going to use the surfacing tool I'm going to add an edge I'm going to follow the same process I'm going to take this edge and then we took the top edge and then we took this edge. So we've got that one in there. Let's hit OK. So now we've got both surfaces there. I'm going to create a ruled surface to close this surface up. So what's going to probably happen is that we'll create a ruled surface and then we're going to have the ruled surface which will create the edge and then we've got four edges to use to close up the back. Let's follow that process. I'm going to first click on this sketch and press the spacebar to hide it. And I'm also going to hide the sketch on this side as well. So I'm going to hide this one down here, press the spacebar. And I've got this other sketch here, press the spacebar. So we've just got these two surfaces here. You could close up the whole ship if you wanted to, but I'm just going to do it bit by bit. Let's come over to the part workbench and select the two surfaces to close. Because these are in line, I should be able to select this edge and control select the other edge and use a rule surface across there. If that doesn't work, I'll get a curve in here, then use the other surface, this side. So we've got that in there. Now we need to come back to the surface workbench and apply that to these edges as well. So using the filling tool, add edge and click one edge, click the other, and then finally click the last edge. See, we've got a problem. If I hit OK, it's going to say fail to create from constraints. That's OK that. And cancel that and start that one again. So new surface, and that's pick this edge, this one, and then the top one. Put them in a different order. There we go. So we've got that in. Let's hit OK. Now we've got them in there. We can convert this to a solid. Let's come over to the part workbench. We're going to compound these together. So that means it will make a group of these as a compound object. So control click all of the surfaces. If we work our way around the object, control click on the surfaces, then we don't have to drill into this tree view and click the surfaces from there. Come up to part and come down to compound and make compound. We have got a compound object. 
click on the compound object, compound out to part, and convert to solid, we now have a solid. The compound is still available. Click on that, press the spacebar. We have our solid object, and we know it's solid by adding, say, a sphere, coming in, right click and transform in that sphere, pushing it up against the shape, hit OK, click on the one we want to keep, control click in the one we want to remove, and using the cut, we get that sphere cut away from there. So this is now a solid. So you can see in there that it's solid all the way through. Let's delete that cut and delete the sphere. We're going to do the same on the other side. So let's come over to the other side. And we've got a different shape here. This is going to use a different method. We're still going to be using the filling surface. Let's bring back our sketches. We only need the top one. And let's come over to the surface workbench and start surfacing this model. We're using the filling tool again and adding an edge. I'm going to click this edge. I'm not going to click the center because we have this curve here. This center line is going to guide the curve. So add another edge by clicking the other edge and then click this top edge like so. We have the curvature, but we don't have the full curvature of this line. So you can see how it's going down to the bottom. We move down, we've got these edge constraints. Let's click on the edge constraints and bring this up. So on the edge constraints, these will guide the lines. So add edge and click on this curve. It pulls that curve out. So that curve surface has been pulled out, but we've got some finer adjustments to make. Let's come up, hit OK, find the surface that's been created, and come down, and we're looking for the degree. And we can lower this degree to two, which is the lowest it will go, and that will conform to that edge. So we've got that curvature in there. Let's click on that surface and see that in a bit more detail by coming over to the view and deviation, which is under the object style. And that's about halfway down. Let's set this to 0 0.01. So we get a cleaner surface there and you can see how that looks. So we look at that surface, how clean the output that is to compare to this one. If we did the same with this one, so this compound solid, 0 0.01, or let's go 0 0.5, then we can see how clean that is. When you output this out as well, the SDL will be a higher definition as well, or whatever you've output it out to, if you're not using the mesh workbench. So just be aware this is taking more computer power as well. Now we've got this, I'm going to hide the sketches by clicking on the sketch line, pressing the spacebar, and also do the same for the sketch inside here as well. So let's click on this sketch, hide that, and that's create a solid out of this side as well. So let's come over to the part workbench, and we're going to create a ruled surface. Can't create a ruled surface across here because it's one edge. So we need to create a ruled surface across these two arcs here, so these two edges. Control click those two, create the ruled surface. Now we won't be able to create a ruled surface across the top, like so, ruled surface. And you see that we've got some deformation in there. So we can't do that, we're gonna need to use the surface workbench. It doesn't really work between a line and an arc that are connected. So come over to the surface workbench. and create a filling surface. Add edge, select the two edges. The surface is in there, let's hit OK. And now we can go through the same process over in the part workbench of compounding these and making them a solid. So control click 
all of the faces that we want, which will be all the surfaces. Part, compound, make compound, and then finally click on that compound, part, convert to solid. Remember to hide the compound, and you now have a compound solid. Word of warning, these are non-parametric. So any amendments that are made, they will be have to have the same process done to them. So the actual bringing back that compound, making that compound a solid again. Let's add the rest of this. So let's bring back those sketches. And it's basically a case of creating the final solids in here. So I'm going to hide these two and using over in the surface workbench, coming in and using the filling tool as an edge and using the edges, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Okay, in that. And we'll do the same on the other side. Let's hide that one. Again, this is symmetrical, so we could have done it in symmetry using the mirror tool. In okay. Let's bring back those surfaces back. Let's hide the sketches. Shift click the sketches, press the space bar. Now you can see those two in there. And let's come over to the part workbench. And you can see it's the same process. And I'm going to take these two, place a ruled surface. You can see we've got an arc between those ruled surfaces. So I'm going to delete that. I've accidentally picked the sketch there. So you can see the sketch has been selected there. I should have selected that ruled surface. So make sure we select that ruled surface. It's highlighted there. Hit delete. And let's take the top, these two. Control click those. Ruled surface across there. That's better. And finally, over in the surface in workbench, we'll add with the filling tool. Add edge and work our way around these edges. Okay, that's come around to the other side. Add edge. Okay, that. Now, the same process over in the part workbench. Click one face, control click all the rest. Working our way around. Remember the ends. Part, compound, make compound. And then finally click that compound, part, convert to solid. Successfully convert it to the solid. Click on the compound, press the space bar, hide it. So let's bring back the other solids that were created. We can see those there. We could take these and fusion those together. So I control clicked all of them. Come up to part, compound, make compound. And then click on that compound and click on the union. That's created that as one fusion. So when we compound them all together, you can actually fusion those together. So you've got the fusion and now we've got our finished, well, partly finished ship that we can add more to the ship shape. What I was talking about with the part design process, come over to the part design and come over to the model. We can create a new body in here. So create body. And what we can do is take that fusion and drag it into that body. It's created a base reference. So that means we can use that base reference in there to create the rest of the geometry upon. 
The trouble is, is that we're using not the compounds, but the fusion that's been made up of that compounded solid of those compounds. So if we change these underlying sketches of these compounds, it's not going to be parametric. So you just have to be wary of that if you wanted to change the underlying shape of this because now we can actually take the top of this and sketch upon here, add in, say, a circle in the middle, like so, hit close, and then we can pad that, and you can see we can add extra geometry on top of here using the part design workflow. So for instance, we can come to the front and create a new sketch along the XZ plane and hit OK. Section view, and we can add whatever we want in here. For instance, let's add some circles. Make sure they're equal. Make sure they're in line, taking the center points, place them in line. means I can move them up and down and also change the diameter hit close and let's pocket that going through all symmetrical to plane and you can see how they've gone through that so you can see how this is solid and it allows you to do this if we did this with the compound what we'll end up with is the shell and we wouldn't be able to make a solid out of this. So you just have to be wary of that. There are tools to make a parametric solid, and those are in the Curves Workbench, but we'll get onto Curves Workbench more in the future because that's more of an advanced workbench to be using. Remember that we can add further definement in the Part Design Workbench. If we're not happy with this shape, for instance, I can create yet another sketch. And we'll do that on the same plane, the XZ plane, hit OK. And it will be advisable to do this closer to the beginning of your project, but this is just showing what you can do. And I can create a sketch in here. We we'll use the section view once again. And let's say we can use the B spline. And I want to create more of a curvature here. For instance, something like this coming up and across. And we'll just add that in there. We've got something like that. And we can make some refinements. I'm going to pull these out. What I'm doing is just making a way to cut away some of this geometry in here. Next thing I'm going to do is put a square around here, like so, and close that. It may look a bit odd what I've done, but when I hit the pocket and change this to through all and make it symmetrical to plane, you can see we can start to take away some of the geometry underneath. So we can refine our shape. As said, this will be best done closer to the beginning, but gives you more ways to actually affect the underlying shape underneath. And we can come into that pocket, double click it, make sure we can see the pocket itself so we can see what we've done and just add a bit more refinement in there. So that's it, that's how to use a skeleton with the surface workbench to create something like a simple ship, allowing you to take that and place it within a part design workflow as a base feature and then build upon that to create your end result. Hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at 
ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.